Jura te faro, no mai hare mai. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Good morning, school. Good morning. Take a seat. Welcome to chapel. Chapel hadn't already gathered. The voice is not brilliant, but we'll get through this morning. A lot to get through, a lot of bit of fun and a bit of message at the same time. Let's go to our opening responses. The Lord be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's bow our heads in prayer for the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, your Son Jesus Christ gave himself as living bread for the life of the world. Give us such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Theme of the day today is real life, real me. It involves some challenges, but we start off with a, a little bit of fun. So um, it's kind of a rugby orientated, strange that. Um, Mr. Skeen, would you like to come and join me up here? He doesn't know what's involved yet. Former top referee, of course, and television match official. Uh, also, uh, who else have we got? Mr. Karen Taylor here. Come on up. And accomplished, accomplished goal kicker, Michael Robinson. Come on, up you come. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go back a little bit. Uh, as you probably know, if you've watched the television, watched any rugby matches or whatever, you've seen individual personalised styles of goal kicking. Can you uh, tell me what Damien McKenzie does? There's that cheesy smile. Right? But everyone looks for it. You look for it, don't you? Is he going to do it this time or whatever? What about Richie, McCaw, uh, Richie Moanga? What's he do? Is it this? Yeah, right. Well, the individual aspect of styling and individualism, if you like, of goal kicking is really up there now. But going back to originally, it was started off by English rugby legend Johnny Wilkinson. Mr. Skeen, you'd be familiar with the name Johnny Wilkinson? Right. Um, what we're going to do is get these three up here to imitate Johnny Wilkinson's goal-kicking style. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So if you just come forward a little bit, that would be really nice. Don't be shy. You're among friends, right? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm getting the look from the headmaster. So what we're going to do, are you familiar with this goal kicking style, roughly? So, so. What about you, Mr. Yep. Taylor? And Michael? Right. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> now we'll do it all together. Oh no, we'll do it individually. Michael, up you come. Just step forward. And this is Johnny Wilkinson. He's an English rugby legend, if you don't already know the name, and we'll find out more about him a little bit later on. Right, away you go. <laughs> yeah, keep going. You've got to stay up here too. Okay, so move over and hold the pose. It's not that hard, really. Mr. Taylor. Hardest thing you've done all week. Oh. <laughs> and Mr. Skeen. Oh dear. This looks scary. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. It's a little present here for each of you.
Give them a round of applause again. <laughs> and I think what we'll do is, um, in rugby terms, I think we'll go upstairs. There it is. That's Johnny Wilkinson about to kick a goal in his own inimitable style. But he's the one really that started off what we're seeing today of individual styles for goal kicking. It's no big deal, but everyone's into it now. But Johnny Wilkinson is the one who started it. So, well, having had those three up here, doing a great job, it's now your turn. Let's do the first hymn of the day, Etu, Thine Be the Glory. Reading today from the writings of St. Paul in Galatians and Romans. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and faith so that you overflow the, with hope by the power of the Spirit. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Mickey. Talking before about Johnny Wilkinson, English rugby legend, and what it takes to be a legend or make a legend, but he certainly was recognized worldwide. Um, for one particular event, one particular thing that not put him on the map, but actually emphasised what sort of a, a rugby player he, he was. So I want to take you back to 2003 World Cup in Australia, final between Australia and England. About 17 all, I think it was, with about 30 seconds to go. And let's have a look. Dawson goes through, makes a wonderful break. 
He's tackled 50 meters from the line. Back's there. Wilkinson will drop for goal. There's offside surely against the thing. No, Martin Johnson has it. He drives. There's 35 seconds to go. This is the one. It's coming back for Johnny Wilkinson. He drops for World Cup glory. Yeah! It's up. It's over. He's done it. Johnny Wilkinson is England's hero yet again. And there's no time for Australia to come back. England have just won the World Cup. Oh, my goodness. What a, what a game. Get the, catch the ball. Catch the ball. Get it off the pitch. The, we've had the full time. They just have to get this ball into touch. There's no time for anything else. It comes to Mike Cat. He kicks it high into the stand. The whistle goes. It is all over. And England are the 2003 world champion. Very exciting. But you can understand why Johnny Wilkinson was kind of revered almost. It was just a... A moment in time that, as I say, didn't just put him on the map, but emphasised the sort of player he was. He was actually a very good attacking player. He was a good tackler. He was very good on defence and obviously for his goal kicking as well. And some of the other, other accolades that he accomplished were um, over there on the right is Johnny Wilkinson uh, receiving his CBE from the Queen's Honours list. And on the left-hand side, believe it or not, he was actually featured on a postage stamp. So he certainly was, was recognised. He was the first five and goal kicker that went on to become, as we've seen, one of the greatest greats of English rugby. In recent years, though, or by the way, he was actually named IRB Player of the Year, which is no mean feat, and also uh, the BBC Sports Personality of the Year, so it just keeps coming. It was amazing. Um, in recent years, however, and here's the kicker, if you'll pardon the pun, in recent years since retiring, Wilkinson has talked about the negative space that he was in for most of his playing career. When describing his career, he uses the words like suffering, stressing, and self-sacrifice. There is little mention of joy or, or enjoyment. He says that due to an impending sense of doom that he lived with from a young boy, he felt that he had to be perfect. And this led to intense internal pressure, constantly expecting nothing less than perfection. In the latter years of his career, Wilkinson faced many, many health difficulties that forced him to question his perceptions and expectations. He recognised the need, fortunately, for change and became intentional about removing internal pressures. He embraced being fully engaged in the moment, seeking to enjoy, uh, experience joy and fulfilment in the now rather than hoping for it in some future success. In sport and in life, if our identity, folks, is entirely dependent on our achievements, then we will believe our whole worth depends on our performance and that will soon up, up pressure, heap up pressure and kill the joy. In the Bible, while we're here in chapel, in the Bible, God talks frequently about joy and delight, and that that is what our Heavenly Father wants us to experience, not just occasionally, but continually. It is not his plan that we wait until the struggle and pressure are over before we feel joy. He intends that we live in joy, even in the midst of challenge and striving. God has given us our gifts in sport and in life. He wants us to enjoy developing and using those gifts, knowing that we are secure in his heart, irrespective of our performance. Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for people like Johnny Wilkinson who demonstrate to us the importance of finding joy in the moment rather than searching for it in the past or future. We thank you for the little things in our day-to-day -day lives that are there for us to appreciate and bring us immense happiness. We pray that you help us find balance between pressure and enjoyment, performance and play, and give us the tools to live fulfilling, well-rounded lives. 
We pray also, also for those in times of suffering and stress. May you be the light that guides them safely to your purpose for them. Allow us and enable us to push through challenging times and be there to support our fellow people in the times of need. In your name we ask it. Amen. We now have time for silent prayer and reflection. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray together in Te Reo. E tō mātou matua te rangi, ki a tapu tō ingoa, ki a tai mai tō ranga te ratanga, ki a mea te atau e pai ai, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi, hō mai ki a mātou ai nei, he tarama mātou mō tēnei rā, muru o mātou hara, me mātou huki e muru nei, e o te hunga e hara ana ki a mātou, O ki mātou e kāwea ke whakawaia, e ngari whakorangia mātou i te kino, noho ki te rangeteratanga, te kaha, me te kororia, ake, 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 āmine. We'll go to our notices. There's just a couple, just uh, more reminders than anything. Um, next Thursday, like today week, is um, the SPC Charity Day. It's an opportunity to uh, get into the Mufti, which we all love doing, I'm sure. Five dollars minimum, okay, food and activities at lunchtime. And obviously it's going to go to a good cause in terms of um, signing up for the World Vision 40-Hour Challenge. It's no longer called the 40-Hour Famine because it's much broader now. So if you want to get involved and you're not um, wasting your money or your time, it's going to a valuable cause. So you can do that next week. Okay. And also this Saturday is Serve Again for those of you who want to get involved and have been in the past, but anyone new would be more than welcome. Um, you can meet this Saturday, 4.30 in the chapel, meet with Mrs. Bromwich, and that would be good. So let's bow our heads for the prayer of the day. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and as of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, those you love and those you care for and remain with you always. Amen. So let's stand for our final hymn and it's one we haven't done for a while. Let's give it heaps today and that's the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Etu.
Let's conclude our service by saying together <coughs> the words of St. Paul's grace in Tereo and English. Kyoto, kyotato, kato, mother of Hatayo Riki, he kuraitu. Eti araho tatua, the fee thingy tatata, the wire or tapu. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. So go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Kia kaha, kia hari, kia tapu. Be strong, be happy, be holy, and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Bell.